Hi folks and uh, welcome to a kind of tutorial. I'm just going to be painting some of the uh, some of the pieces that I got with the um, objective markers, or I say, from the, the Mantic kit, um, which we're going to be using for the club in the Vanguard. Now, I'm recording this on a Saturday night and our first games of Vanguard are on Tuesday. Now, I'm hoping I can get some of these painted pretty quick, so the techniques I'm going to be using are pretty fast. So, I apologise if you think they aren't great um, but that is why hopefully they'll still end up looking pretty cool even though I'm using quite quick techniques so the first thing I'm doing is I'm just getting some some black paint I have spray and coated these um, grey uh, I tend to use Halfords grey primer because it's really easy to get hold of and it's relatively cheap um, and it also helps this because it's stonework uh, now the paint I've just used for this is uh, just bog standard miniatures paint. Um, it used to come in the glass things like this, but it's now now comes in tubs like this. Now I'm watering it down so it's almost like a wash because I want it to pick out the details that on the on the stones. So it's just gonna brush it all over quite liberally at this point. I'm more wanting the details to be picked out on this than I am anything else at this time, at point in time. Um, I'm mainly going to be using sort of dry brushing to get the stone effect that I want on this. Although I will use other bits and bobs later on as you will see. Um, so yeah, this is just going to go over it and it won't necessarily dry as dark as it looks at the moment. That's another advantage of using a wash. So as you can see, it goes on quite, quite quickly. What I'll probably do in the vid is I won't bore you with like a this crazily long video of how I do every single individual piece. But what I'll do is I'll probably stop the video once I've just gone over this one, so you can see how I'm doing it, and then I will come back once I've painted the stones and things, um, so you can see where they're at if that makes sense and what I'll be doing next because on some of the ones of runes I want to pick out the runes to make them look like they're kind of sh shining through the rocks uh, and the other ones I want it to be a bit more natural so like this one's got actual inscription on it and so I want it to look a bit more carved and like magical as such because trying to do the effect that I want to do on something this small is going to be quite difficult to be honest right so so you can see You might want to go over some of the rocky bits at the bottom as well, to be fair, which I haven't done. Um, I've just given that a good old coating all the way around. So I'll be back in a minute when I've done the same to uh, the smaller rock and the other two larger rocks that I've got here. Um, I may also quickly do the, um, the weapon crate because it's got a lot of metal involved in it and it's easier to just to do that, give it a quick going over first. But yeah, okay, I'll be back in a minute, guys, when I've done all of them. Cheers. Hi, guys. Um, I'm back now. I've uh, given these all a, a coat, as you can see. They're all pretty much dry. Some of the recesses maybe still be a little bit damp, so I'm just playing around with some bits before I get to go on that. Uh, what I've used here is um, a stone green for miniatures paint. Um, I've just used it to paint the the dragon egg objective um just sort of see what the colors like really but it's just a thin coat on that nothing too serious and obviously i'll be hitting that with a wash in a little while um but i'll put that to one side just thought i'd let you know i've, I've covered that with that so the next bit is kind of like some people use a bit of kitchen roll just to dab off any excess i don't always find that's always needed you just got to make sure that you haven't got too much on your brush and the way you approach is quite light so just for, for dry brushing and then all you do is you literally drag your brush across now the only problem I'd say with this brush is it's a cheap brush this is only the first coat so we don't have to get too worried about this because there'll be more there'll be more different dry brushes on the top at a later date hopefully and the nice thing about this is actually picking up some of the some of the wet paint still so it's nicely 
thickening in some in places. Now the nice thing about that as well is if you do it really, really lightly to begin with, so I don't know if you can see how that's coming out, which is quite nice, it is quite nice. You normally want the edges to be a bit more, um, a bit lighter. And if you do it really nice and light to begin with, especially whilst the other paint is still a bit wet, what you'll find is if you hit the edges, they are a bit lighter. Can you see that? So this is kind of like the effect you're looking for. And like I say, this is just the first layer of uh, dry brushing. And actually, I was a bit dubious because when you pay, apply this paint on as a coat, like with the egg, I thought it was a bit too green to begin with. But actually, dry brush like this, the green isn't quite so dominant, but it, it gives you a dirty kind of a dirty kind of grey colour, if that makes sense, rather than a solid grey, which may look a little bit too much like paint, rather than a natural kind of rock colour. So yeah, you literally just do this all over, um, and as I have said, it's I'm not using the the thing to remove any excess and I'm not having any issue doing it like this but you literally just go mental with it I personally wouldn't fork out on an expensive brush this is literally from the works so you get it in a pack of brushes for a couple of quid maybe three quid and there's quite a few brushes including one with a sponge on it which I find quite good for different effects um, just like I say loose keep it loose in your hand don't grip it too tight let it just hit the object that you're dry brushing, in this case a piece, a piece of terrain, and work it. Don't even be scared to go round in circles. Um, if you put a bit too much paint on in one area, I find going over it in circles sometimes just blends it a bit more. That's another advantage of not waiting until it's perfectly dry to dry brush on it as well. But if you go all over, it should start to pick out, as you will see, some of those details by leaving the recesses much darker than those of the top surface so you can see on that one it's working out quite nicely and, and like I say this is not this is not a you, you don't have to be a veteran painter to get this kind of result this is just a bit of trial and error and like I say if you go over some of those areas around the corners and stuff again it gives you that kind of highlight without actually having to try and add any paint to it although I will be going back and doing this again in a minute anyway with a slightly lighter thing which you'll see so I'm just going to do that to all of the rocks because I want them all to be similar kind of colour so doing the same thing so you're just dabbing it off to make sure you haven't got too much on your brush just the one thing I would say is if you're not sure to begin with pick one that hasn't got too much detail or the back of it so this one the detail this little way same kind of thing all the details on um, the front I, what I would call the front with what in the middle is going to be a gem I'm gonna have a gem set into that so I'll paint that as a gem so the detail really isn't on the back so I'm gonna use that as a test piece and how hard I need to pu push the brush for the dry brushing or how much it can just do on its own in its own right without me having to really coerce that paint off the see if it does that which is a bit too dark uh, bright then just dab dab a bit more off on the palette or well, that is where you can use your um, kitchen towel to dab some off if you need to um, I'm not too fussed at this point you can always apply another wash over the top which will bring it down a bit some people probably swear by doing that anyway but as I've said to you I want to do this kind of quickly so it's a bit of a bish bosh job but as you can see actually on this one it's working quite well anyway and like I say the reason the reason for using a bit of a cheaper brush is that it doesn't you'll see with this one it's starting to fly at the top so you do it with an expensive brush or a nice brush you'll find it gets ruined pretty quickly and it's really only very good for dry brushing after that and how much like how the legs in it and the brush tend to sort of go pretty quickly so 
cheap brush that costs pennies pretty much as part of a pack is probably the best way to go. Right, so I'm gonna dry brush all of those. Uh, what's left, obviously not the armor because that's gonna be melt, so I'll put that back for later. Um, and then I'll come back when I'm on to the next stage. Cheers, guys. Hi, guys, so as you can see, I've um, dry brushed all of these now, these, the, the stones, and I'm going to be moving on to the next bit. Now what you may notice is uh, there's some bits which are a bit more sort of obviously colored than others. I'm not worried about that because naturally rocks will have a various, the very kind of like appearance anyway. There's not gonna be a consistent color all over. So I think it gives it a nice kind of natural look to it. The other thing you may notice is on some of them, like this one was, I think more one of the last ones I did, you might notice that it's not quite as dark in some of the, the carvings as others and therefore you lose a bit of the detail. I think it's the same on some of these. So again, don't worry about that because especially with this one, I'm, I'm gonna be going over that different color anyway, but we can go back at a later date with an actual ink rather than the, just the paint that I've used to water down and wash it. Um, and that'll pick them all out again, which is probably the best thing to do because after you've dry brushed it a bit, it may just um, lose a little bit of the contrast anyway. Um, so we're all good with that bit. So what I wanna do is I've got a light gray, again, it's a miniatures paint, but it's in the old glass one. Um, I tend to try and get the lighter color out first. If you're gonna use similar brush, which I am because I'm lazy. So I'm just gonna get a dabbing of that. Now. Obviously this is a very different color, so I'm not gonna bother using that straight on there because it'd be a bit crazy. I'm gonna go back and get some of, of the green gray out. I also have, it's like, they call it pale flesh, but it's actually like almost like a bone color, which is kind of useful I find for highlighting because I don't like adding white. Um, the other thing I wanted to say to you guys, I, I, I'm a bit old school in that I use a palette, uh, in uh, a tile palette. What I will say about that is that I'm not just cleaning this for the benefit of you guys every time um, I wanna change a color. I do that because I find that if you put wet paint on top of dried paint in terms of acrylic, you tend to find that it dries quicker. Um, and also sometimes it can be difficult to see what color you are mixing when you're trying to mix colors. So at some point I am going to give a wet palette ago because people say all kinds of groovy things about it. Uh, I'm gonna have to make my own because I kind of feel that's the way sh I should do it. Um, so yeah, this is a little bit more gray than it is green now. I'll probably do a video at a later date for that. Um, and any, any suggestions on how to do it, any ideas, some good tutorials, how to make your own wet palette, if somebody could stick them in the comments below, that would be awesome. Uh, and I can go ahead and use those to give myself an idea of what way, the way to go. So, right, I am going to pick out the first one that I was using, which is this one. Again, turn it on the side, because it's a part that's not so big and not so important. And just, Go over it again. Now have a little inspection to see if it's actually looking any different. Because sometimes it's very hard to see if the, the contrast isn't massive. So I should just go over that. Yeah, you can see that is that is picking out a little bit more with a little bit of a bright colour. Now again, if you want to get really kind of cool about it, think of the direction of the, the light is going to be coming from if this was a a natural out there in the nature standing stone. So it's gonna be from above. So where possible, brush down. And what it'll do is it'll pick out the mostly the bottom lip of the carvings, which will give it that natural look with the way the light's bouncing off it. The other advantage to this as well is that when you get towards the bottom, if you just don't, at all and just hit the top of the rocks at the bottom it will give that impression of the hit the light hitting from above down and casting a bit of a shadow so you know even leave bits under that like that for example hopefully you can kind of see what i'm doing 
yeah there you go so it's adding a bit more color to it and again like I say the top of the stone is where where you want the the lighter paint to be where the the sun where the sunlight is hitting it um, a bit different to OSL which again is another thing I haven't really had a go at trying to master so again we'll try it we'll show you on this one because it might help a bit more so if you can see I'm just coming down it's drying out quite quickly because I've you don't want to put too much water on this you just have to be careful where you put it and how you put it now this is the bit where you might need a kitchen towel if you do this to sort of reanimate some of that paint you've mixed up get rid of as much on the palette as you can and then just that's it right so hopefully you can see how that is actually picking out the lower bits rather than all of it on there so I'm literally just doing that and then when I get to the bottom if my brush can't get that I'm gonna leave it and then just do the stones because it's just again it's kind of natural-esque just the way that the light perhaps isn't getting to the bottom quite so easy now these cracks on this one I love and I'm gonna pick them out later and you'll see I want it I want it to have kind of like a, an idea a, a look of how and use your fingers to blend in if you need to if it's looking a bit too brushy um, I want it to look like this magic exuding from this stone so I'm going to go back later on that's why this one I'm not so worried about the, um, the details at this point because this, this is going to be a bit experimental and I want to have a kind of green glow coming from the the runes so we'll come back to that sort of help represent the serpent as well so there is that one all right, I'll come back in a minute when I've done the other two and maybe go to the glowy bit or actually another stage of dry brushing first probably. Catch you in a moment. Okay, uh, I'm back. I've done that layer on those um, and I'm literally just going to add some of the cream, uh, the, what is the pale flesh from this range, um, into the palette because we don't need a lot of this, it's not going to be a lot of it. So I'm using what residue of paint there is there and you'll see again, you'll see exactly why. This is going to be quite a lot lighter. Now you could, if you really wanted to, do several stages of this and you could go from quite a dark grey all the way up. But like I say, I, I at this point in time I just want to get these done so that when it comes to our first games we've got some to use on the table. Um, also because it's a, it's a project that's kind of been done for and with Mantic I don't want this to be um, too long otherwise I won't be able to turn out some, some content. Um, so obviously I want to be able to show do some uh, battle reports and have these in there would be great right so choose a bigger one right we'll go for the snaky one go for the snaky one so again this time we're really picking out mainly the edges it doesn't matter too much if it goes elsewhere and we're being super delicate super super delicate you don't want you you really don't want to have like a really solid line because it makes it look quite unnatural if, you, if that makes sense. Is Sometimes with dry brushing you can almost, almost replicate an airbrush if you're doing it really gently and really delicately. You can get a similar sort of effect. Now of course if you're in a real rush um, some people would have argued that the first step you can do like the wash and then wipe off the stuff on the higher um, areas, leaving the darker areas sort of in the recesses. That is that is arguably a really nice, quick effect and way of doing things. Um, I've just chosen to go this way because it adds a little bit more texture quite quickly. I should be able to get these all done this evening which is not bad and I can move on to the other parts so again same here this stone may end up being a little bit lighter because it's smaller that's fine because it's 
realistic. It's nothing. It's not casting any shadow on itself. See that one's coming out quite quite nicely actually. Look at this. Go on to the next big one. Just concentrate on those those obvious lines first. Mainly because I didn't mix up a lot of this, and you can't make your stretch go everywhere. Yeah, just a bit like that. That bottom bit there, I've probably gone a bit too harsh on. But hey ho, it's still looking good otherwise. Look at that. Who says you can't use dry brushing, eh? I think the key to it is really not loading your brush at all too much and letting letting it all do its own work. You can sometimes put too much on a brush for dry brushing and it just looks like you've dragged a brush across it. That's what you kind of want to get away from. Allow the brush just to do the work and blend it as much as you can. So I've just done a bit there. Right, so this is the last one. Hopefully, hopefully there's enough left on this. Yeah, look at that. Easy. Now, because of the runes on these are quite fine, I'm just going to give them a light dusting. And then I'll come back over that in a little while with some more wash to get that out. That, uh, get those runes more clearly defined. I kind of want to do the other thing first because it's a bit different. And it's the first time I've tried it, so hopefully it'll go to plan. So yeah, hopefully you can see on this that there's, yeah, that one again. See, despite not there appearing not to be much paint on my brush, it's done the job that it needs to. That's, that's only on a few coats. So that's the effect you can get on just a few coats of the paint on them. Okay, I don't know if you can really get the depth of the different colors involved on that, but they're there. <laughs> <laughs> to trust me on that one. Um, right, so I'm just going to clear up my palette and then I'll be back for the next bit. 